What did the doctor say? Okay, uh, she had a, a, lump, a lump in her arm, and um, she was going for therapy on her leg during track season. And so she said, Nana, can I ask the doctor what's wrong? You know, ask him about the lump in my arm. If he can look at it and maybe Come tell on over this what's way, going on. Done. So we asked the doctor, it was the, um, it was the doctor at the uh, therapy place for her leg. Anyway, he said, I'll look at it. Then he said, let me do a sonar. So he did a sonar on it, and then he looked at it, and he said, you know what, I think I want to order an MRI. So he ordered the MRI, and we had that. And then he called me and said, I want you to go downtown to the UAB and see Dr. Uh, Jackie. He's an oncologist. I said, oh, oncologist? Well, that's ca cancer, isn't it? He said, well, it's tumors. He said tumors and cancer and whatever. So we went down to see him, and long story short, we didn't uh, go with doctor, with that doctor, but we were referred to another doctor over at uh, Children's, and she specialized in tumors, and uh, she uh, also taught it. She taught it to students at UAB. And so the oncologist uh, called me and said, after she said, we need to do a biopsy. So they did the biopsy. And then she called me back, the doctor did, and she says, well, then I have some news and it's kind of hard to hear, but it came back cancer. She has a very, very rare uh, form of cancer. It's called uh, Avalar soft tissue sarcoma. And if you read about it, it's, it's very, very rare. It uh, comes up in children and uh, young adults, and the survival rate is about five years. Wow. Uh -huh. It's about five years if they, uh, if she has the cancer and it spreads through her body, she has five, five to ten years. Ten years on the older uh, adults, but for the children, it's like five years survival. So anyway, uh, the next week, the doctor called us in to give us options of what they could do about the cancer. And so option one was they could operate and try to get the cancer out. But she showed us all the scans and all the pictures and everything that, of, of what was going on. And the cancer, uh, the tumor was laying on the bone, so the bone kind of curved, just a little, like erosion, like it wore away just a little bit. And, but the worst part about it was the cancer was, uh, the tumor was wrapped around the, the nerves. Okay, she said, no, it wasn't, no or, <laughs> she knows. All. You can still hold the mic in this, this case. It was wrapped around the nerves and stuff. And she said that if we take it out, I have to go around this. She said, it's just like taking a piece of tape and a piece of um, paper. She said, saran wrap. But anyway, but <laughs> anyway, for, to go around, to try to pull the, uh, pull the cancer away from the bone. She said, but if I cannot get it away, I may have to shave the bone and put some uh, fake bone in there or whatever, but going around the nerves and everything and uh, the veins with, where, it's with the, where the blood is, right? Okay, she had to go around that. She said, and we may have to leave some in there. And if we do, we don't have, she'll probably have radiation or we'll have to go back in and amputate the arm. No, no that was the second option. That was the first option of what they can do for us removing the tumor, but they couldn't guarantee anything because there would be some cancer left in there. And the second option, the second option was amputation. So she said, in order to make sure that we get it all, we amputate her arm from here on down. So, of course, she freaked out. Her father freaked out. <laughs> they were all in there crying and everything. I just sat there and listened. And uh, so, Steve, you know, he finally came to and he said, Morgan, uh, I don't want you to lose your arm, but I want you to be here. I, you know, I want you, I want to, you know, I want you to, to live. And so he said, so he asked the doctor, he said, if this was, he asked both, because the oncologist was there and the surgeon was there, and he asked them both, um, if this was your daughter, what would you do? And they both said, amputate. So he said, well, look like that's the way we want to go because I want my daughter to be here. And so Morgan said, I want a second opinion. <laughs> and so she said, I want a second opinion. And so I said, yeah, that's what we want. And so she said, sure, sure. She said, I don't blame you. I, I would want that too. And so uh, she sent all the scans and everything out to four different doctors and one in Portland, 
One was in uh, uh, Pennsylvania, one was in at Vanderbilt, and the other one was at um, Arizona or Utah or somewhere, and then two doctors at UAB. So it was six doctors was looking at her, at her uh, records. So we had to go back last Monday. That was the day after the prayer. We had the prayer on Sunday. We went Monday. And that's when they gave us the results. And all the, most of the doctors said, operate. Do what, you, do what you have to do, but try to save her arm. Do you? So we said, that's what we're going to do. We're going to operate and get it out of here. You know. But before that, I'm sorry. Well, this is a long story. Well, just tell what happened after the surgery. Let's go there. Because the I may get you on the program. We can talk about it maybe Thursday night. And we'll go through all the detail. But now... After the surgery. After the surgery. After the surgery, because you didn't. They didn't take the arm, because you said yeah, we're no, not going to try. Yeah, no, they didn't take the arm. The doctor came out. The surgery was six and a half hours. She came out and told us that she got the tumor out. She did not have to scrape her bone, and she said, you know, she said, as far as we know, we got everything. She said, she said, as far as I know, it, it, everything went well. She said, but I can't tell you that we have everything until the pathology report comes back after we send send everything off. So she said, but I'm going to come back in the morning to see Morgan because she's asleep. I want to make sure if she had any functions in her arms because we had to move those veins and uh, arteries and everything around because that one main vein uh, that was supposed to come this way went around the back of her arm. And they had to move everything around to get the tumor out, but they got it out. And so she said, but I'll be back mid-morning mid tomorrow. So... Um, they went to get Morgan in the room. We got up to the room. The nurse, the nurse got her in the bed. And so she said, Morgan, can you um, squeeze my hand? Morgan <laughs> squeezed her hand real hard. So she said, that's good. That's great. She said, can you move your fingers? And she went. <laughs> and she took her other hand and she went. <laughs> She was high-fiving the nurses and everything. So the nurse said, that's very good. That's very good. So I got there the next morning, and the doctor was amazed. She said, The doctor was amazed. She was amazed. That's she said, I can't believe. She said, know. because she told us that she don't know for sure if she's even going to be able to use her arm because of all they had to do to get the tumor out. She didn't even know. She thought her arm would be numb. She wouldn't, couldn't use her hand or her fingers and everything. But the evening of the surgery... She was able to move her hand. Oh, yeah, right after. And look, here she is holding the microphone <laughs> in the hand that the nurse probably wouldn't work. Now, Shirley, we know God did this. Oh, yeah. We know that the doctors can only do so much. But we took it all the way on Sunday. Now, there's something that they told me that happened the day of prayer. I'm going to need Elder Hogan, I'm going to need Elder Bray to come forward. Sister Shirley, I want you to describe that. You got anything you want to say first of all before? Well. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, first I want to thank God because. Yes. I was determined that I would lose my arm. I have no feeling, but God did it. He made a way for me. And I wanted to thank everybody for praying for me because this is a representation that God answers prayers. That, that's it. okay. Well, so on the day that we prayed for, Elder Bray, are you here? Oh, right here. Okay, I'm looking at him. So they were standing here, Elder Bray, Elder Hogan, and, and the other elders were praying for him. Yeah, Sister Pat. And Sister Shirley, tell what you experienced when they were praying. Okay. Because I'm going to take a, I'm going to challenge this because the congregation. Okay, well, I'm just going to set it up. <laughs> anyway, we were all standing out here. Uh, we was, I can stand out here. We were yeah. all standing here. 
and Elder Gray was standing right here. Sister Pat was right there. And Elder Gray and uh, Morgan was right here. And Elder Gray was holding Morgan's arm like this. And then she had her arm down. She was just had, had, had her arm like this. And she was praying for her, praying for her. Sister Pat anointed her. And she was standing in front of her. She was praying for her. I was standing by Morgan. I had my hand on her back. So everybody was praying. All the elders, all the pastors, and everyone was praying. So then Bishop, after everything was over, he kind of broke everything up. And I went to step back. And when I stepped back, all this water started flowing out of Morgan's arm. And I said, oh, like that. And Elder Hogan walked up and said, uh, Elder Gray is spilling your oil. And Elder Gray said, huh? <laughs> and so she, I, I don't know what she did after that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, she, gave it tell, tell what you what you just say, Elder Gray. Um, Elder Hogan gave me Kleenex, and uh, and I put the cap on the oil because bottle, she was spilling. The and oil. I looked for oil. I looked on her shirt and her pants, back of her pants, and the floor, and I didn't see anything. But these are the little vials that we have. How much surely came but out the oil? Water flowing out her out of her arm, and I said. I felt the water. I said, oh! And I felt the water, but my hand was dry. My hand was dry. And I looked down to the floor. I thought, the way it ran down, it's like, like a half a glass, a cup of water. It was just pouring out, just falling to the floor. So I thought it got on her pants or her shoes, and I jumped back, 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 Everything was dry. Everything was dry. And Elder Hogan. That was, that was a miracle working. You saw the water, Elder Hogan. Is that right? Oh yeah, he saw it. Now, here. Well, she startled me because I was in prayer. Yeah. And when I looked down and I said, "Well, looking at Elder Bray's vow, and it was open." And I thought, "There's nothing else in this vow." It looked like you thought small. the vial was empty. I thought it was empty because you but saw all this water going. I down. saw it falling, and um, I said, "Where's the water?" I looked down, and where we're standing right now, there's no oil stains. There's no water. But it, I, go ahead. Go I thought, Shirley, what you I thought it was a small faucet. I mean, the way it was gushing out, it was coming out. And Elder Bray can tell you right now, she still has. She has oil left. She still has the oil in the vial. Now, I just wanted you to hear this because I don't have an explanation. But the Bible says on the testimony of two witnesses, at least two, let the truth be known. I heard Shirley the first time. She said, well, Elder Hogan saw it. And I'm just thinking, Shirley is just imagining things. <laughs> and then when I went to Elder Hogan, Elder Hogan said, yeah, Bishop, it was water flowing out. And Shirley said that she thought Elder Bray was squeezing stuff out of Morgan's arm. <laughs> she was holding it so tight. tight. It was like, it, it looked like she was holding it tight. And you thought she was squeezing this out. The way she held it, I thought she was praying so hard that she just squeezed it and it just started running out. I didn't know what happened. So, all I just wanted to present that to Did you have any knowledge of this? Uh, you didn't know this. Crying. I just wanted to be known. I, and I know we took a long time. You can't hurry God. You got to let God work according to God's time. And I think this was an indication of the Lord saying to them, to those two, especially the mother, and then to have a witness. It was going to be all right as it has been all right, as it has been, and then as we see you up here now giving God the glory and giving God the praise. So I just want the congregation to recognize this, and I want everybody to stand right now because we're going to give thanks to God. Because though I have no explanation of that flow, other than a flow of impurities, symbolic of the cancer being flowing out, that's all I can see. But what God has done is marvelous in our eyes. And we give him the glory for it.
Shirley. Shirley, yes. Okay. Okay. We, got, we got the pathology report back Wednesday. Okay. And the uh, oncologist called and said they got the cancer. She does not have to have radiation. No radiation. Praise God. So, Father, we thank you for this miracle in our presence. We thank you, Lord God, that you are still God. You are still working miracles in this day. And we give you praise. We give thanks for this deliverance. And we know it's because of you. See, if it had been on the doctors, Morgan would not have an arm today. But because of you, she is whole. She is complete. She has been restored. And we praise your name. Let all the saints in here, let's give a sevenfold amen. One time. Amen. 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 And amen to the glory.